All right, so today's idea is I'm going to just take a few moments, have a beer with you, talk shop about how everything's going, the training and whatnot. I really wanted to put this on YouTube Live, and I hadn't activated the live streaming, so I have to wait 24 hours, unfortunately. So in the meantime, I do have an agenda. I don't want to waste time. We'll get right into it. Uh, what happened this week? Some pretty cool stuff. I went into the savannas and trekked through uh, mid-thigh deep water. Uh, that was actually a little, it got me a little nervous uh, towards the end of the hike there. I was out, I was ready to get out of there and, and finish the hike up. And it was just stretch after stretch of this mid-thigh deep water. I was out there by myself, gopro in. I got some really cool footage that I'll share next week. It was it was definitely an opportunity for me to practice remaining calm. I, I kind of felt that fear, you know, that anxiety when things not going correctly. Uh, and I didn't let it take over. I said, you know what, all you can do is keep pushing forward. So I continued to push forward and I got out of there and it was fine. And I felt really cool about it all when it was over. I was proud of myself for not letting that anxiety and that fear take hold. And I remained calm, right? I've been trying to remind myself that those are the situations I have to look for, those opportunities to remain calm and cool in a stressful situation. Because, you know, that's that's the real deal. That's the moment of truth right there, right? And I'm trying to identify when it happens. Hey, this is one of those moments. This is one of those moments where I need to stay calm, stay cool, don't freak out. Get yourself under control, compose yourself, and think properly, right? Mm. Ah. While I was walking in the savannas, I decided I needed a training plan. Like an actual on-paper plan that details why I'm doing this, what the routine looks like. Like, you know, I like to get things down on paper. I, I think it makes it more real for me. So I did, and we're going we're gonna to look at the plan I created in just a moment. I have an Excel spreadsheet we're going to take a look at, and I'll explain how I created this too. So I've bought too many pairs of shoes that don't fit me properly. Before we get into that, though, I want to look at books. So I've been reading. When I, get, like, when I get interested in something, I get obsessed with it, and I have to know everything about it, right? So I listen to audibles in the car like you wouldn't believe – and I've already listened to a couple on this sport, ultra running, right? So let's get into that. Let's see. I listened to this one first. Dean Carno here. Dean Carnassus. He's a Greek guy. The Greeks are natural runners. Uh, <laughs> this was a cool book. I really enjoyed listening to Dean. Uh, this was a kick-ass book. I really enjoyed this. This was the second one I listened to, Rich Roll. And this guy, I relate to him in a way, you know. Um, you know, he had to quit drinking and stuff because he had a problem. And, uh, you know, there's parts of me that have addictive tendencies, too. So it was really nice to listen to this guy's story. And he ends up pulling off five Ironman Ultras. They're Ironman triathlons, and he does five of them over the course of a week in Hawaii on five different islands. Crazy. So this is the next book I'm listening to right now, Born to Run. And I'm really enjoying this. This is actually not what I thought it would be at first, but I'm really enjoying this story. Uh, and then here's some of the actual books I have. So I bought this one. This is one of the first books I got right here, Fixing Your Feet. And this one you use differently than most books, he says. You know, he's like, you know, look up the stuff that's interesting to you through the table of contents. Go to that section and read, you know, if you have a pain in a particular part of the foot. So that's what I've done. But there's parts in the beginning about, you know, your foot and your shoe wear and sock wear like stuff there's it's all in there uh tons of good materials in there for that so the other book i have in my physical collection that i'm actually reading instead of listening to is marathon by hal higdon and this one is been really important actually in the short amount of time i've possessed it i've already learned a ton of information and it's what helped me create my training plan here as you'll see in just a second so Hal Higdon, this guy's run 111 marathons, I believe the book says. I have a feeling it's probably greater than that now. But he's got a really neat website, halhigdon.com, you can go to. And right here under training programs, he's got some different options. And all I did was I went to marathon training, base training. And this is if you're not in that great of shape, right? And you can't run three to six miles easily. Okay, that's me. 
zero to 100, right? Remember, that's the name of the game. And here's a little sample, a 12-weeker, right? Now, I'm already registered for my first marathon. My first marathon is March 1st, 2020. I have exactly 177 days, 9 hours, 34 minutes, and 0 seconds until then. So what I did is I took this base novice plan, stole this from him first, right? It's all free on his website. I didn't steal anything. So I took this and I kind of, you know, I modified it a little bit to make sense with my timetable. Because what I really wanted to do is go back to the training programs, go back to the marathon training, and he's got a 18-week novice one training program. Boom. Right? Bam. 18 weeks. So I just combine those two, right? So you can see the first, what was that? The first seven weeks are from the novice base strength one, right? And then I'm going to switch into the novice marathon training. And I'm set to run a marathon on March 1st, 2020. Okay, let's do it. Now, prior to that, I do have a Tough Mudder event that we're going to be going to as well in December. Oops. Opened up Chrome on accident. December 7th, we'll be running this 2019 Central Florida Tough Mudder. It's only a 5K, 13 obstacles, but me and my buddies are going, so we're going to have a good time. We call ourselves Rusties. Um, we just had all this rusty-ass weightlifting gear in my buddy Jeff's house, and we somehow managed to get everyone together and we did some really legit strength training basic program i think we were doing a five by five starting strength five by five with the ramping sets and uh, man we got in good shape though a lot of us got really strong some personal records were definitely set in that gym i miss those days it was a lot of fun we all miss those days of training together team rusty's rusty's iron emporium that's what we called it but we're going to be running together, a lot of us, in this December 7th challenge, so that's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. And then the marathon. That's that's the big thing is the marathon, obviously. That is the big cheese right there, the marathon. So David Goggins is another book I skipped over. Excuse me. David Goggins, Navy SEAL ultra runner, all around bad mother. I love this dude. I've got halfway through his book, Can't Hurt Me. And I stopped listening for some reason. I don't remember what happened. And then it's weird, too, because I think I stopped right at the part before he becomes an ultra runner, which is what I'm most interested in right now, right? An endurance athlete. And I just love the dude's mental attitude towards things and his tough mindset, getting your mind calloused. And I love that. I love the idea of it that you're just mentally tough, mentally calloused. Your mind is strong you know you can oppose those weak thoughts brian tracy says human beings take the path of least expediency most of the time right almost all the time and that's where that self-discipline comes in to talk yourself out of that path of least expediency the easy way right and i think that's a big part of why i'm really interested in doing the endurance running is i want to be more in control of my mind and my fears and my anxieties and be able to control all that stuff and I think you have to face all those demons when you're out there running like that and pushing yourself so you know it's, it's exciting to me and I'm, I'm looking forward to it all to be honest so so oh yeah the other thing we're doing is the city strides uh, or at least I'm trying to get my friends to do this with me. This was just some public one that was uh, right on the front page. It was free. I can click it and just look at it here. So this person looks like they're in Germany or, uh, yeah, I'm going to guess Germany. Let's see. I have to know now. Luxembourg. Oh, I was wrong. It's close. It's close. But look at this. They've run a big chunk of it. They're doing great. They're doing a great job here, but this is a little application or a website, technically, I guess. Excuse me. And it works through Strava and some other things, and it basically can track your runs around your city, which is really neat because it gives you a goal in my mind. I love having little goals. I think I've ran 0 .03 or 0 .3 of my city so far. I don't recall what it said, but 
it's it's a bit you know it gives you something to do like i'm gonna go really i'm gonna I'm going to run around my entire city while I'm training. I think that's really neat to say, oh, yeah, you know, you know how many streets are in Port St. Lucie? 3,800-something. And I've run around 45% of them. I've completed all those roads. It's pretty neat. I think that's cool to be able to say that. Training for the marathon is the ultimate goal right here, right now. That is the big cheese, though. We're training for that marathon. I have a routine. I mean, I'm not even running that many miles. This week, we ran 1.53, 1.5, rest tomorrow, 30-minute walk, 4.5-mile long run. And then we're doing that. You see things progressively get a little – they go up and down. It goes up and down. Your long runs a bit. And then we switch gears, and this is where it gets a little bit more serious, right? Three-mile, 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 six-mile cross training, three, three, three. So if you watch here in the middle, these runs are the ones that ramp up fives, six, seven, eights, nines, tens, and then it tapers back down. This tapering as you get closer right here, especially to the marathon or even the half marathon, it tapers a bit too. It looks like eh, maybe not so much, but either way, I got a plan in place. I've made bets with my friends that if I don't do exercises, I got to pay up money. I'm going to continue to upload one video per week. I really would like to upload additional videos when I have time to do so, but it's challenging. I'm, I'm still unlocking all my creative comfortability, you know, with YouTube and video editing and directing and stuff. So bear with me as I, I get through all that creativity, right? I'm just learning right now. I'm learning the skills to edit, to video, shoot properly, just all that stuff. So it's taken some time. And I got a lot of other stuff happening too, so uh, I just want to stay consistent at least with the one video per week at the moment. That's a bare minimum. I'm going to get the one video done no matter what, but I would definitely like to eventually start putting out more content on a weekly basis for sure. That's it though, I guess. I think we, uh, I think that's the majority of what I wanted to go over in this video. I really did want to live stream this one. Moving forward, I'll do live streams maybe throughout the week and then get that normal Thursday video out. I hope you're enjoying the story. I hope I get more people involved into this journey. I've got my close group of friends are already getting pretty engaged, and I feel like we're all uh, combining a level of activity that we haven't shown in the past, you know. Or it just it feels nice to see us all reinvigorated. We're all fired up again, working towards a goal. We're all out there. We're holding each other accountable is what's really important. Holding each other accountable, getting out there, doing the activities. I drove over to my buddy's house today. He said he was going to get up yesterday and come out, and I'm texting him. I don't want to call him right off the bat, but I'm texting him, hey, man. And you know what? I had the urge to just go out and run, do it by myself. And I said, nah, he doesn't live that far away. Let me just drive over there. So I said, you know what? You can't get off the hook, Bubba. I'm coming. I'm coming, and I'm, I'm going to wake you up, and we're going to go run. And that's what happened. And he said, thank you for coming and getting me. And that's what I think it's all about right there. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in again, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.